Hey everyone, Anthony Venuti with In Touch Mortgage Solutions. It's Friday, Finance Fridays, and on this mortgage market update, we're gonna unpack the rates for the week ending on April 7th, and what it means for you as a purchaser, a buyer, if you're looking to refinance, if you're renewing your mortgage, what's in those mortgage products, what's not in those mortgage products, and how to keep more money in your product, especially when selecting that mortgage. Stay tuned, you don't wanna miss it. On this week's mortgage market update, we're gonna unpack the rates for the week ending April 7th and what it means for Canadians if they're looking to purchase, refinance, or even renew their mortgage. What options do they have? What should they be paying attention to in those mortgage products? What's in them? And more importantly, what's not in some of those mortgage products? And we'll talk about that more as we go through the rates and products. Firstly though, I wanna start off by isolating some important dates that are gonna be coming up in April, or one in particular, and that is April 12th, where we're gonna hear from the Bank of Canada, Governor Tiff Mecklem, regarding their policy rate decision. Will the Bank of Canada hold policy rates steady at 4.5% like it did in March, or can we anticipate an increase or even a cut in the month ahead? So obviously we wanna hear from you, our viewers, what do you think is gonna happen on April 12th? with the Bank of Canada. Now, following the April 12th rate decision, the next one after that will be on June 7th. So there is a little bit of a gap in between. But also next week, as we start to get those numbers, as March has closed off and now we enter into April, we're gonna start to get a lot of those real estate data numbers from those particular boards and municipalities. And we can start to see if there's gonna be any trends emerging, especially when it comes to sale, sale prices, inventory levels, and the amount of homes that have actually transacted. And I can tell you from the ground level here in Vaughan in the GTA, while well, we're definitely seeing a huge uptick in those prices, as well as the amount of uh, attraction to multiple offers and bidding wars as uh, we start to embark on the spring market. But obviously anything can change at any particular time. So if this is something that interests you, we invite you to hit that like, share and subscribe button. Don't forget to smash the notification bell so that you can get notified every time we post a new video. And next week we'll be talking a little bit more about budget 2023, some of those mortgage relief measures that were implemented from the Financial Consumer Agency of Canada uh, regarding those clients with exceptional circumstances and what the banks are doing to help as we start to get some clarity on that and the foreign buyers ban which the government walked back that was initialized on January 1st. We'll touch on those and how those could impact the mortgage and real estate marketplace. But let's take a look at some of these interest rates. So obviously on this channel, we're gonna be talking about some of the best interest rates that are available for consumers in the marketplace. And more importantly, what they mean to Canadians because it's not always about the rate, it's also about the product. And we've got a lot of questions around what products are for particular clients. A lot of times we'll see something online, an interest rate, and there'll be always this little fine print. And what does it mean insured? What does it mean 20% or less down, loan to value? You know, all these stipulations are very important when shopping for a mortgage. A lot of times we're seeing the bait and switch. And obviously it's important that when you're talking to your mortgage professional, that you know, you're explaining your situation, advising them of the particular uh, down payment, the income, all this information, providing that for your pre-approval is very important. But understanding the differences between an insured mortgage, what it means, and a conventional mortgage. So just to do a quick recap, especially if you're new to the channel, and if you're looking for your first home and this is where you're starting, we welcome, welcome you to the channel and we appreciate your viewership. So let's start off by talking about insured mortgages. What is an insured mortgage? Well, an insured mortgage means that you're purchasing a home with less than 20% down. And when you do so, well, the banks require an insurance premium to be added onto that for risk. And generally speaking, if you're buying with that less than 20% mark, depending on how much you're putting down, if it's five, 10 or 15%, well, that insurance premium is calculated on the down payment. And although there are three major insurance providers for mortgage default insurance in Canada, the three major players being obviously the Canadian Mortgage and Housing Corporation being the big boy, and then you have Sagan and Canada Guarantee. There's only three and all three of them have the same premium, so it doesn't matter which one you end up with. There are some differences in what they offer to their clients and having that conversation with your mortgage professional will help provide some clarity on which one you may opt to select. 
Now, looking at some of the other restrictions on insured mortgages, well, you have to adhere to a maximum 25-year amortization. You can't have an insured mortgage with less than 20% down that exceeds 25 years. You can have a mortgage that's 25 years or less, but you can't have a mortgage that it goes to 30 years when you're buying with less than 20% down. The other restrictions are the purchase price on that home is it has to be below a million dollars. It doesn't matter if your purchase price is a million or over and your mortgage amount is less, it's the actual purchase price that matters at the current moment unless the government changes those guidelines, which they haven't done so yet. Now, the other major guideline for an insured mortgage, which holds a lot of individuals back generally, is those servicing ratios. What are those servicing ratios? Well, this is how a bank looks at the qualification. So they'll understand that, you know, you have things like GDS, which is gross debt servicing, which is your principal interest in heating of the actual mortgage. How much of that money that you make is actually going towards servicing just the principal interest in heating, and that cannot exceed 39%. And then you have TDS, which is total debt servicing, which can't exceed 44%. And TDS encompasses basically any car payments, loans, lines of credit, student loans, any other lines, uh, lines of credits, unsecured debt. What else is there in the mix that cannot exceed 44%? And these numbers are heavily influenced by your credit score. If you have a good credit score, well, you can maximize the 3944. If your credit score is lower, well, they may scale you back on those ratios and it could impact how many lenders are willing to do the deal. And there are particular guidelines with a lot of these insurers that will accept credit scores generally above six to 620 of a FICO score. And having a conversation with your mortgage professional about those options will help you. Now, obviously, what does this mean for you? If you're purchasing with an insured product, while well, you have a lot of options and you're gonna get a, take advantage of some significantly better rates, and some of those rates are starting at the lowest end, the best rate of 4.44%, all the way up to 4.64% for a five-year fixed mortgage. And this is very important because as you look at this range, you might obviously think that you want to be on the lower end of these rate scales. But there are some things that you need to pay attention to. And one thing that we are having conversations with our clients about, especially if you're opting in for a five-year mortgage, is what is in the mortgage and what's not in the mortgage. Now, generally with these lower rate interest rate mortgages, these ones that are at the lower end, while they're stripping away certain things from the client, their ability to potentially refinance that mortgage, their ability to leave that lender even if they want to pay the penalty, a lot of these products may have what's called a bona fide sales clause, which means the only way to exit the mortgage is for it to hit maturity or for you to sell the home. And even if there are some limitations in that product, let's say you are able to refinance, well, you can only refinance with that lender at whatever rate they are offering. And another key component to some of these, what we call no frills products, is the inability to have a larger lump sum payment or increase your payments each and every month. So a lot of lenders may either strip that away, reduce it, um, depending on the type of product. So that is something that you wanna pay close attention to if you're an individual that wants the capacity to up their mortgage payments significantly or be able to put a significant amount of money towards their mortgage each year, you wanna pay close attention to those prepayment privileges. And the three-year option, very similar, is starting at 4.79% all the way to 5.09%. And you can see that there is a significant discount between the five and the three-year. Three-year obviously being a little bit more expensive as there still is a lot of volatility in the bond market and bonds are how fixed rate mortgages are priced. And obviously, just as a caveat, any interest rate that we talk about on the channel today can change at any given time based on uh, what is happening in the bond market. A lot of these banks, the ones that we're talking about on the lower end, they may be broker friendly banks. They may be mono line lenders as we refer to them uh, that you only have access through a broker. And then obviously some of the higher middle range lenders might be your conventional banking models. And obviously understanding the penalties in these particular products are very important. We'll touch upon that as we get into some of the other options. So 
you definitely have a three and a five year option. These are the most common. Obviously there's a four, one and a two, but generally we've highlighted these because these are the more common ones that we see. Five year always being the most popular, but as the interest rate environment has changed, more and more individuals are leaning on the three year because of the uncertainty and wanting the ability to renew that mortgage sooner. Now, keeping in mind any product that we're talking about here on the channel has the ability that you're able to renew those mortgages within the six month window. So if you're approaching renewal on those particular mortgages, well, let's say you take a three year product, in two and a half years, you're able to renegotiate that rate with the lender without having to leave that particular bank. And if you want to leave, obviously there are penalties, especially when taking on a fixed rate mortgage. You need to be fully aware of how that bank, the bank that you end up selecting, calculates their penalties. And our advice is always to speak to your mortgage professional surrounding those options. Now let's take a moment and shift into insurable mortgages. What are some of the major differences? Well, insured and insurable mortgages are applicable to purchases and switches or transfers. And the major difference, you know, different than an insured mortgage is that you don't necessarily have to pay the insurance premium or you're not paying the insurance premium if you're putting 20% or more down. So in order to be an insurable mortgage, it is the lender that is generally paying for those insurance premiums and not the client. So much unlike the insured mortgage where you're buying with less than 20% down and you're paying the insurance premium, which is added back to your mortgage. On the insurable side, it is the bank that is paying for that particular product. And depending on how much money you end up putting down, so 20% being the least amount that you can put down, all the way up to 35% or more, will determine what rate you're eligible for, as most of these banks will give you a better rate discount depending on how much money you're putting down. There is a tier system from lender to lender and understanding those options is important. But now what are those interest rates look like? Much like the insured mortgage, you're looking at a starting rate of 4.44% all the way up to 5.24% for a five year fixed insurable mortgage. And if you're looking at the three year product, well, you're at 479 to 509, very similar to the insured product. The difference is, as I said, you're putting 20% down. You are still limited to a purchase price of a million dollars below a million dollars. And you definitely still have to have a maximum 25 year amortization. And those ratios still need to be at 3944. No change there. Now, one important thing, if you're looking at insurable mortgages, these are also applicable to individuals that are facing the mortgage renewal. If you're approaching your mortgage renewal window and you're coming up in the next few months, you are eligible to look at this product depending on how much amortization you potentially have. Now, let's say you started your mortgage five years ago at 30 year amortization. Well, now you're at 25 and you're eligible for an insurable product. And a lot of these products within themselves are uh, very advantageous because they may be significantly lower in rate than what you may be offered by your existing lender, but not at all times. Obviously it's something to pay close attention to, but you also have to understand that if you're switching from one lender to the next, there might be some additional costs like mortgage discharge fees, potentially appraisals, like a lawyer fee or some other charges that you should be paying close attention to. And it's always within the fine print. It's speaking with your mortgage professional about what those charges could look like are very, very important. Now, another thing is with these insurable lenders, these insurable banks that are offering these switch and transfer programs is that they do offer two things. They can capitalize some of these costs back into the mortgage. So you as the consumer are not coming out of pocket to switch. It's just added back to the mortgage. Well, you are coming out of pocket, but you're not actually paying for it at closing. But the other options are some of these banks are also offering what we call cashback products, where they're el eligible to give you up to a certain amount of money back, depending on the size of the mortgage, which can help our clients with paying for some of these costs that could be associated with transferring the mortgage over. And not to sound like a broken record, but if you have any questions about this, always feel free to reach out to us at In Touch Mortgage Solutions. We'll be more than happy to help you uh, and provide clarity on this situation. Now, looking at conventional mortgages, these are generally the 30 year amortizations. You must have 20% or more down, unlike the insured that you can buy with less than 20%. A conventional 30 year amortization requires you to put down 20%. There is no cap on the actual purchase price. There are 
what we call sliding scales if the purchase prices are well over 1.8 or $2 million. But obviously these mortgages are 30 year amortizations. The rates are a little bit more expensive and we'll get into that in just a moment, but you're looking at 5.09 starting all the way up to 5.34%, obviously keeping in mind what's available to you within that mortgage product, what is in it and what is being stripped away. So if you're looking at a conventional mortgage, obviously this is for purchases and refinances. And a lot of clients that have that 20% down are waffling between an insurable product with 20% down at a 25 year AM or a conventional 30 year with 20% down. A lot of them may lean on the 30 year, even though the rates might be a little bit higher, those monthly payments may be more advantageous. And the best way to summarize this is to download our app, which we've included the link in the description box below, so that you can download it, play around with obviously those GDS and TDS calculators, stress test, land transfer tax calculators. You can play around with the rates and see exactly what those numbers would look like for your particular situation on how much money you're putting down and how those payments could differ between 25 and 30, what the difference in payment between putting 10 or 15% down versus 20% down, and what it could save you at the end of the day. So these are some important conversations and we encourage you to download the app for free in the description box below if you want the link. And finally, we'll talk about the three-year option. Obviously, this being a very popular product, especially on the conventional side for purchasers that are buying and want that 30-year amortization or may need it to qualify, that's another key, is you know 4.89 to 5.34%. That's obviously a very good product right now. It's been the most popular as it gives these clients, a lot of these individuals, that timeline to say, hey, look, I don't know where interest rates are headed. Uh, you know, one and two years are still way too expensive. I'd rather take a three and renew in two and a half years or have that option in three years to uh, renegotiate or switch to a different bank. And you may have noticed that we didn't talk about variable rate mortgages on these particular options. And although they're here, uh, I just wanted to basically omit them as more and more Canadians are you know, staying away from these variable rate products, especially with uh, interest rates being elevated right now. But that doesn't mean that they're not important, they're not valuable, because remember, any variable rate mortgage, the ones that we're talking to here, especially uh, depending on the type of rate that you're getting, well, they're always or generally three months interest of penalty to get out. So uh, if you're getting a full frills variable rate mortgage, maybe in the mid to high scale of that rate uh, spectrum, well, you're gonna have a three month penalty to get out. So that means if you're looking at particular options and maybe you're waffling between the one and the, and the two year product, but you might be able to get a decent rate on a variable for, for five years, while those penalties on the one to two year might be much higher, then potentially paying that three month penalty on that variable. And it gives you a little bit more certainty because remember, with a variable rate mortgage, you can always lock into a fixed. From a fixed, you can't go into a variable. So we'll leave the video here. Please, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit the like, share, and subscribe button. Share the video if you think someone that you know maybe uh, have value in this video that they didn't know. And if you didn't know anything uh, maybe going into this video, we invite you to hit the like button as well. But we'll leave the video here and we thank you for watching. Thank you for clicking. Wish everyone a great Friday and even better weekend ahead. We'll see you next week.